Well, it is almost nine, so I always like to start on time. And if we start a little earlier, like 10, no, it is nine. So then we'll have some time for coffee in, in a little bit. Do I need to do anything for the live stream microphone? It's all working, all set up? Are we, should we leave the doors open for ventilation? Or um, do we yeah. Yep. I, at the end of my little welcome, I'll ask and get a head count. So as people trickle in, they get a chance to be included. So I, I welcome all of you to join us today for Chaos Con. I appreciate that <laughs> you have the lens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I appreciate that you're all coming here in person and joining us online on the live feed. Uh, speaking for myself, I was super nervous to travel again. And I'm really happy that you all are doing the leap of faith that we can do this again, that with the right measures in place, we can prove that we can come back in person. And so thank you all for coming and to the Linux Foundation for making this possible and implementing the right procedures. And thank you everyone online who is joining us. So just thank you. We have amazing sponsors. I want to thank the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and Google for being our silver sponsors and Beturgia and Red Hat for being our bronze sponsors. Throughout the event, because we are in person and we are online, please go on Slack, ask questions on Slack. That way everyone has the same chance of asking questions. And even for the in-person speakers, if you would please post your questions on Slack, then I will ask the questions based on everything that was posted online. That way really we are trying to be inclusive to everyone who is participating in the event online and in person. There is a ChaosCon Slack channel. So this QR code, if you're here in person with the camera, will be the invite to join the Slack, and then you have to find the right ChaosCon Slack. Which Slack workspace? The, there is a ChaosCon channel within the Chaos Slack. So maybe someone can post the ChaosCon handle in the general We'll figure it out somehow. <laughs> For today, I want you to think about metrics, people, and chaos. Whether you are a user, developer, or a foundation, we all care about the health of open source ecosystems, open source communities, and we need to figure out what it is that makes open source sustainable, inclusive and effective. And for that, we need to understand community health. And we do this through metrics with people and here in the chaos community. Let's start with metrics. Metrics is more than just data. Metrics helps us get insights. And Sarah Novotny yesterday during her keynote highlighted that we humans are really great storytellers but that if we don't talk to each other, if we don't get the feedback from others, if we don't look at the data, then we come up with really strange stories or tell the wrong stories. And we all learned this back in 2014 when Heartbleed shook the world because we didn't understand the health of this critical open source infrastructure project. And so that is where the, we all in open source came together and said, okay, we need to understand the health of our projects, of our communities. And in 2017, this is how chaos started because there was so much energy going into the direction of understanding community health through metrics that we said, okay, let's bring together the ecosystem. Let's start the chaos project and figure this out together. And we believe from the beginning that we need to have this dialogue and be very open and transparent and inclusive about it. So we had several events over the years with 
events like this ChaosCon. We have a podcast where we elevate use case and experiences with measuring community health. And we are about bringing people together. And some of this work, there's a lot more going on, but some of this work is defining metrics. And so next week we will be releasing uh, next version of our metrics. We have already defined 70 metrics. That is something to celebrate across five working groups and 22 focus areas. We have defined 70 metrics with more than 130 people who have been involved in the process. So many of you here in the room and online have been participating. So thank you so much for all of the hard work. Really, it's been amazing. I also want you to think about people. Open source communities depend on people and healthy communities can only exist if we have really good people who like to be in the community and working together. But how do we, how do we create those healthy communities? What is the secret to doing that? And we have been discussing this from day one in the Chaos Project, that diversity, equity, and inclusion is important. And we have been investing in people. And I want to, I want to give you an example. I want to show you what this can look like in the Chaos Project specifically. I want to highlight Shoya's involvement. Shoya is a graduate student at ECNU in Shanghai. She joined the Chaos community through our mentorship program in partnership with the Google Season of Docs last year. And she helped write the handbook for our diversity, equity, and inclusion badge. From there, she continued to be engaged, helping to launch the Asia Pacific calls she has been involved in organizing the Shanghai meetup for chaos, bringing together the local community there. And she's been really instrumental in translating our metrics into Chinese. And also she joined as a panelist for chaos con to bring in new perspectives as we're elevating stories about measuring community health. So Shoya is a great example for what can happen when you really invest in people and build an inclusive community. And this is just one of many stories in the chaos community. Over the last few years, we have done 24 successful mentorships. And I just want to thank everyone in the community who has been involved in in being so welcoming, responsive to these students, mentoring them, helping them understand open source and just bringing them into the community. This is only possible because of all of you. So thank you, thank you very much again. And so we have already accomplished a lot in the chaos project. And the third thing for today that I want you to think about is what do we want to do next as a chaos community? What are you interested in working together with others in the chaos community? There are some, some things we've already started working on. We are really good at defining metrics. We have the process down just over the last summer. We had Google Summer of Code students who really helped streamline the process. So I think it is time to move on to more challenging problems. We have talk, started talking about metric models. How do we bring different metrics together for specific use cases? Maybe we can write some guidebooks saying step by step here, this is the problem some people face. Here's how you start getting the metrics. And then what do you actually do when you see metrics going up or down? Another conversation we've already started is around ethics. What are the ethics around collecting data, measuring communities, having information about contributors? And again, that's one of the conversations that I invite you to join. What are other things we can do? Maybe it is time to start compiling data sets and providing quality data 
for researchers, for institutions to learn about community health, having some baselines. Maybe we can move on to having an identity data set for contributors in an ethical way where contributors can opt in and then we can provide better, better data uh, with that information. Maybe the Chaos Project can branch out and force, forge new partnerships with other communities to bring in conversations and share what is, what's happening here. And how do, we, how do we ensure that when someone says they're using chaos metrics or chaos methods, that they're actually doing it properly? Do we need a certification program? There's a lot of conversations that we, we can have, and maybe you have other ideas for what you want to do in the chaos project moving forward. So for today, think about metrics to understand community health, Think about the people like Shoya that make up healthy communities. And where do we want to go next as a chaos project? A few announcements. We have a code of conduct. Please be nice to each other. If there is any concerns, please let me know. There are also others. Um, if you go to the code of conduct, there is a mailing list you can report issues to. Because we are in person, and live online. If you please use the Slack channel to ask questions and have conversations, that way everyone gets included. The slides are online on our schedule. We are also taking pictures and videos. Thank you, Elizabeth, for Hello. being our photographer today. If you don't want your picture, please let me or Elizabeth know. We're happy to make sure that you're not in any of those pictures. There are lightning talks after the second break. And if you have something you just want to talk about for three, four minutes, let me know. Happy to add you. You don't need any slides. If you have a slide or two or 10, and you can do it in four and a half minutes, happy to include you during that session. And then questions are love. Show the speakers you love by asking questions or just in general. Be engaged today. And then after the event, Amy, thank you for helping organize this. We want to get together uh, for those who are still around and maybe have some lunch. Amy, do you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we've found a few different lunch options that will be order yourself so that everyone can just pay for themselves and make it easier. Um, we've got everything from vegan options, seafood, Japanese, um, Turkish. So we'll, we'll have lots of options. You can go where you want, grab friends. Um, and then afterwards, we're thinking about doing the underground tour of Seattle at 3 o'clock. Um, the website is undergroundtour.com. There is 41 open tickets, which is perfect for us, if everyone, even if everyone wanted to go. At 3 o'clock, we were thinking it was a good time so people could eat, go on the tour, and then have the rest of the afternoon tune in the evening to themselves. So we just need like a show of hands who's interested. Like I said, well, everyone will just buy their own tickets. Is three o'clock good for everyone? Mm -hmm. So three o'clock underground tour. Who would be interested in going? And the website is undergroundtour.com. It is Bill Beatles underground tour. So you know that you're on the right site. Like I said, three o'clock has 41 openings. So I think that's a good option for everyone. So did I understand that correctly? Everyone books their own ticket. Yes. So if you can maybe put the link in the ChaosCon channel so we can all find it, that would be amazing. Thank you. Amy, do you know how long that lasts? 75 minutes. I did look that up just now. Thanks. 75 minutes. All right. With that, it is time to make room for our keynote speaker.